Today I'd like to play a demonstration on a very interesting flute. One of the makers that both players and collectors really desire are the Grenzer family, August Grenzer and Heinrich Grenzer. And this is a flute by Heinrich Grenzer. Uh, it is a five key flute. Normally when we have a five key flute it would um, not have a long F key and it would have a C key. But in this version of the five key flute, we have the B flat key for the thumb. Then we have the G sharp key here, the long F key, which is what we often call a tromlitz F natural, in that when we push this key down, it opens this hole, which is the same hole that gets opened by this key. It's a mechanical device to allow us to have only one hole for F, whereas a lot of flutes will have two different holes, one for this key and one for this key. And then, of course, the D-sharp key. Grenzer instruments are quite rare and certainly um, highly desirable. I felt very lucky to acquire this one, and it, it's in fine condition. It has a very interesting feature as you can see in this close-up of the keys, those little dots around the edges of the keys, it's possible that those are actually holes that go all the way through the key and that the, it was designed that way so that the pads could actually be sewn onto the key. Um, a couple of uh, experts, including Peter Spohr in Frankfurt, um, suggested to me that this flute could have been made for the sewn on pads. It would be interesting to experiment with that. The instrument plays very, very nicely. It is at a fairly high pitch. It plays at about 446. Grenzer instruments, uh, Heinrich Grenzer instruments, could go as low as a little below 430 and all the way up uh, higher, higher than this. This is joint number two, probably out of three, so this would have been the middle pitch. The lower one could have been right around 440, and the, the upper one must have been 452, something in that area, so fairly, fairly high. It's the case that we find with many makers where the, the, you can buy a flute that is basically at lower pitches or a flute that is basically at higher pitches. This was obviously done because of the lack of standardization. Uh, so if you played with people who for one reason or another played at these higher pitches, you would buy a flute at those pitches. If you played at lower pitches, you would buy a flute like that. I'm sure a lot of flutists, especially professional flutists, would have had quite a number of flutes to be able to fit into any different pitch situation that they might come across. The instrument plays very well. I'd say it, it plays better in the upper two octaves than it does in the bottom octave, but the, the bottom octave is, is quite good. And um, it took me a little adjustment to get used to playing it, but now when I play it, it, it feels really quite nice. I'm playing two different uh, things, three, three movements. The first movement is from uh, Haydn Trio, for flute, violin, and cello. It's a nice uh, allegro movement that works nicely on this flute and kind of shows the energetic, uh, clear, focused sound that the flute has. And then I chose two movements from a composer I'd never played before uh, named Frederick Ranish, R-A-N-I-S-H. Um, he died, I believe, in 1777. I don't know when these pieces were actually written. The pieces would be slightly before this flute was made, because this flute was made after 1796 and before 1813, I believe. But the two movements is a slow movement and a fast movement, and I think the, the slow movement shows quite well the Again, the clarity of sound and the ability to shape notes and, and make, make interesting colors. And then there's a fast movement that I think is also very nice. So I hope you enjoy hearing this flute by Heinrich Grenzer.